good morning, good afternoon, or good evening for all my listeners out there, wherever you are tuning in from, whenever you are tuning in from, welcome back to What the Flight Radio, a podcast for in-flight crew, frequent flyers, and anyone that gives a about aviation and travel. Happy Wednesdays, everyone. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for being here once again for What the Flight Wednesdays. Just want to shout out all of my loyal listeners that are always tuning into the show. I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. And if you are new here, welcome aboard to What the Flight Radio. Yeah, my name is Jess. If you are new, I'm a flight attendant for a major U.S. airline. And this podcast is brought to you in part by my brand, Living by the Upward. If you're into flying, festivals, fashion, food, fitness, fine art, and you live your life with a fulfill it yourself mentality, then you are in fact living by the Upward. I would love to connect with you on social media, so feel free to follow along in the show notes. I have all my socials linked there. You could follow along at WT Flight Radio or at Living by the Dot F Word. And if you're feeling extra generous after listening to some episodes, go ahead and leave me a five-star review or any type of review rating on Apple Podcasts. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, enough of the self-promo. I hope you all enjoyed the last week or so since I've last talked to you. If you missed out on episode 11, that was two weeks ago, I actually took that show on the road with me and I can't believe that I pulled it off. I basically recorded that episode on my layover in between like two very productive days of work. And so, yeah, I honestly just can't even believe that I got it done, but I did. But within that episode, I had touched upon how busy I was feeling and the struggles I was having with keeping up with all these platforms and that goes for both this podcast and my YouTube channel, both YouTube channels, Living by the F Word, which is like my brand YouTube channel, and then obviously the YouTube channel for this podcast, which shows the video portion of this podcast. So yeah, I still have to get episode 11 up on YouTube for What the Flight Radio. I'm going to have to do that and this one after I finish uploading and and uh, basically distributing this episode for the day. But yeah, besides that, I was talking about all the promoting that comes along with the platforms as well and how it's just been challenging for me, um, you know, like as, as far as like finding the balance for all of it. Um, you know, when you have to create clips and like actually break up certain things that you are working on so that you can kind of promote it to people. Because a lot of times people will miss that you even uploaded. You have to kind of like have it in their face a lot. You know what I mean? And so uh, even just that for Instagram has been hard for me. And yeah, like none of this is easy work, obviously. So I just want to shout out all my fellow content creators out there because I don't think people really realize until they do all of this how much these people bust their ass <laughs> to get stuff done. I think a lot of people bust their ass depending on like, you know, your career like and or whatever your hobbies are or if you have a small business or whatever, you know, lots of people really work hard, but content creating is not that easy. I think a lot of people think it is, but when you are a one person show and you're doing the actual scripting and the actual recording and or editing and doing it all it's a lot of work on uh all accounts like just it's so much so yeah shout out to all the content creators out there and obviously shout out once again to all my listeners that support me or all any of my youtube subscribers out there that support support me because you guys give me the drive to keep going so thank you guys but yeah i had mentioned with all that being said, I had mentioned that more than likely I would miss last week's episode because I was toying around with the idea of doing a bi-weekly show. And I'm not sure how I really feel about that, but I think that it kind of has to be the move, at least for now. And, you know, there really is nothing wrong with it. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with it. I know plenty of podcasts that I listen to that I absolutely adore that are bi-weekly and they have a really nice flow to their show where they do an interview segment for one of the podcasts for that month and then 
they do a solo cast for the second episode. So with only two episodes per month, if it's bi-weekly, obviously, that's kind of how they do it. And I really love it. And so I kind of think that would work better for me and my schedule where I'm doing just two a month because on top of all the other stuff I'm creating in my job, it's, yeah, just been too much for me. I can't get it done. So, um, yeah, I luckily have been really gentle with myself about this. And also the fact that once again, it's Wednesday. Yep, it's Wednesday. I'm recording, editing, uploading all last minute, all on the day that this podcast is due. And usually in situations like this where I can't keep up with what I envision for a project, I normally would beat myself up about it or I would compare myself to other creators that are pushing out multiple platforms of content and just crushing it. And like I said, I've just been gentle with myself because everyone's situations are different and unique. And what it comes down to is with my career, my job as a flight attendant, nothing ever goes according to plan. And it's extremely difficult to get into a routine when you work a non-routine job. So... I try my best uh, to like plan things and I do try to like utilize my time wisely, but it's kind of like rare for things to like go as they should if you're working for an airline. So even if you have a line, which the term line was the aviation lingo, I think it was episode two, the aviation lingo for that, but basically a line is a schedule. And even if you have a line, sometimes your trips don't go according to plan and your days off become extended work days or work trips. And yeah, you really just need to be flexible. So I guess what I'm trying to say is even though I'm doing my best and I say I'm going to, you know, script my episode this day, I'm going to record this day, I'm going to do my YouTube content this day, edit for YouTube that day, I'm going to go get my new computer this day so I could set it up this day and do all the work, get ahead That literally is like what I tried to do the last two weeks. And none of that happened because my one trip, my one trip really kind of fucked things up. My one trip got so messy, you guys, and we diverted and there was so many things that happened. And I'm actually going to get into it in a whole separate episode because we have a lot to discuss today. And I'm just going to talk about diversions and things that don't go according to plan when flying which is basically all the time, (laughs) just so you know. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in another episode because it's just like too much. But yeah, just things, irregular operations, you know, things happen. And so I just really couldn't get everything done when I wanted things to get done. So let me bring you up to speed with some updates and then we'll dive into our aviation lingo segment. And then, of course, we'll get into our episode for the week, which is a really interesting topic that many of you probably don't even know about unless you're in the aviation industry or unless you're a really big aviation geek or maybe if you're keeping up with global affairs you might know about this topic all right let's talk about some updates first my biggest update is i finally bought a new computer which is like so fucking exciting you guys i cannot wait to set it up yeah i bought it this past sunday like during we had hurricane weather it was like pouring rain and i drove to the only store that had one available the only one that was available that was like 30 minutes away from me i drove to get it um because i actually went to a closer store and i like just struck out miserably I was dealing with a lot of running around trying to get this new iMac. (laughs) Um, But yeah, the color options, you guys, it was so tricky to choose what color I wanted. They come in six different colors. And obviously, if you are one of my subscribers over on Living by the F Word, you know I love colors. And so I was between the yellow and the green. And the one store that I went to that was local to me, they didn't have the yellow on display because someone had knocked it over and broke it. So when I first walked in, I remember seeing every single color except for the yellow. And I was like, dude, what? I was like, really? What the fuck? Like, seriously? And they told me someone had knocked it over, but they were like, oh, you can't even buy this one in the store. It's like there's three of the colors you can't even buy in the stores. You'd have to order online anyway. And I was like, I don't really want to order it online because then it's going to get delivered when I'm not home next week because I'm going to be away. And I was like... I just like want to pick it up in a store. You know what I mean? So then they didn't even have the green available. So like that was that whole mess up, which is why I ended up 
picking it up in the store really far away on the day that it was like pouring rain hurricane everywhere. But I ended up going with the green color uh, since that is what I could pick up in the store. And it's like more of like a mint pastel green, which will look really nice in the room that I'm currently sitting in, which is a room that I really got to put on my YouTube channel, how we redesigned it. It's like a really nice functional living space now where I podcast. Uh, if you watch on YouTube, like you can't see too much of it, but trust me, it was like completely redone. And yeah, this is going to like just look so dope in it. And I'm just so excited because it's just going to really help my production process as far as like exporting podcasts and videos and things that sometimes like would make my laptop crash. Yeah, so that's like one of my biggest updates that I'm really excited about. And um, let's see what else here, what else here? I kind of went off script there. So let me see what else I wanted to tell you about. Um, oh yeah, so I have worked obviously the last few weeks, of course, I've been flying, uh, gotta make that paper, but I uh, kind of felt like shot yesterday from my, my one trip. And I just like wanna shout out flight attendants out there that fly a lot of hours because I'm extremely exhausted and I probably fly half of what they fly. So um, yeah, once again, everyone's different. You got to do what's right for you. But I was so exhausted yesterday. I didn't even get to set up my computer because I flew a trip on Monday. I got home and I didn't go to bed till like 2 a.m. And then I woke up at 6.30 a.m. with Kia, my puppy. And by 11 a.m. I was just like crashing yesterday. I was so tired. I was like, I cannot podcast. Like I just felt like, yeah, I just felt like my energy wouldn't have been there for you guys you know what I mean like I was like super drained and so I decided to nap and then I went over to my friend's house to visit her her husband and their new baby this is like my long time time friend from high school so I was just like so excited to like see her and see her baby and like hold her baby and it was like oh my god you made a human type of moment you know it was like just so cool but this is how you know I was out of it their dog's name is Jack and I kept calling him Sport Sport is her family's dog's name from like back when we were in high school, like talking early 2000s, like I'm talking like basically like 20 years ago. And I kept calling this dog Sport. Like, I don't know what was up with me. Like, I really, I was just like way out of it. And I just didn't feel like I was like fully present there to be putting the podcast out or well, obviously it wouldn't have been put out yesterday, but recording it, you know what I mean? So yeah, honestly, I don't know how I'm going to rock up to my first festival back, which is next week. That's another big update. Uh, you know, I am just like so excited for fall festival season. Like it's here, guys. Like so I basically have been waiting since March 2020, which was my last festival for my first festival back. And now it's already next week. I have so much prep that I have to do for it. And I just feel like I'm so out of commission for festival life. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, after this episode, I'm going to set up my new computer. I have like, you know, things I need to like set up for that computer, like in order to hopefully like get some things done for before that festival and like other trips I have to fly next week. Um, but yeah, that was probably like my biggest update. And then obviously flying. Oh, I also did uh, Truth or Drink with some fellow music festival content creators. Last week, I did Truth or Drink with Emma Capotis, Vibe with Aid, and Ace Antonio from the Beat Stop TV. So you can go and rewatch that if you missed it on Vibe with Aid's IGTV. And so that's like a little series that they've been doing and having guests on. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I also, oh, I like batch filmed and recorded two new YouTube videos, which are currently out. I did outfit ideas for Elements Music Festival, which I'm attending next week. And I also did a bonus video for outfit ideas for Arc Music Festival, which is in Chicago. They're both happening next week on Labor Day weekend. So if you're into fashion or festival fashion, you want some ideas, um, I have those out on my Living by the F Word channel. So I'm really super stoked to be going to Elements um, because I just feel like there's like some similarities with Burning Man because some of the co-founders are burners and so I just know that there's going to be sound camps there and a lot of re really great art and like burner vibes I feel like um also really small event and in nature so yeah really like so looking forward to that um and yeah I have so much to prep I have so much to do like I just 
I'm keeping busy. I'm keeping busy, like I said in the last episode. So yeah, I'm just doing the best I can do with all this uh, on my plate, you know? And so yeah, once again, thanks so much for the support. Let's get into aviation lingo, though, because that was like the longest fucking intro ever. I feel like sometimes my intros are longer than the actual episode, (laughs) but I just want to like catch you guys up to speed. You know what I'm saying? So it's just who I am. Very like transparent, personal person, you know, just want to like keep it real with you guys. So that's what's up. Let's get into aviation lingo for the week. So this week's aviation lingo is... Dun, dun, dun. Sit time. Oh, the dreaded sit time. It, I guess it really depends on the person. Some people might enjoy sit time, but typically people do not enjoy sit time. And I'm going to tell you why. So sit time is the time that is allocated in between flights on a crew member's pairing in between different legs that they are working for that day. So pairing and legs, those have both been on prior aviation lingo segments. So if you don't know what those words mean, go check it out, backtrack and listen to some other episodes because chances are if there's something I say that I don't describe what it is, I've probably already talked about it on aviation lingo segment. But yeah, let me give you an example of sit time here. So this past Monday, I flew a DFW turn. And we had almost like a three hour sit in between the flights. So in case you didn't know, and I feel like most people do not know this, flight attendants are only paid for flight time. I'm going to repeat that again. Flight attendants are only paid for flight time. And I will dive into that in a whole other episode on how pay and schedules work if you're interested but we are not doing that right now because we will literally be here forever but yeah sit time which sometimes can be hours you are not getting paid for you're not even getting a per diem which honestly in my opinion is bullshit and yeah I said what I said I mean it I think it's bullshit but basically um just to yeah, give you an example, I worked this turn and let's say I had only one hour of sit time, which that normally would allocate for the deplaning of the aircraft, the cleaning of the aircraft, and then boarding of the new passengers. So that sit time, if you think about it, if it's only one hour, is really non-existent and it kind of keeps the day moving and flowing and, you know, it just like is, you know, not really there. I would be getting paid the same amount just as I would with a three hours in between. So it's just really not ideal. And lots of times it makes your days so much longer and makes you really tired because you're just sitting there. And I mean, think about it. If, wouldn't you like rather have a day where you're getting paid for seven hours and you're gone for nine hours of the day or your duty day is only nine hours versus a day where you're getting paid for seven hours, but your duty day is 12 hours. Like, yeah, of course, like it's a no brainer. Everyone knows the answer to that. Everyone wants to not, not be paid. And so, yeah, that's kind of what happened the other day. I, um, I had that trip and it just kind of like wears you out because you are on a 12 hour day and I've kind of touched upon it on previous episodes, but that's like just from like when our check-in is. And so, Obviously, I'm up way before the check in and it's just like long day is like pretty much like what I'm trying to get at. And so the sit time sucks because you're not paid for it. Um, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> let me give you some pros of sit time, though. OK, I'm not going to be like a total Debbie Downer. All right. But there are some times you have some pros and some benefits of sit time, especially if you're in an airport that has one of your favorite meals or if you need to get work done, it could be like good to get some, like a lot of times I'll get some Instagram work done if I need to. Um, I've definitely gotten some things done on sit time. Honestly, though, I feel like it's really difficult for me because the truth of the matter is, is like I should have scripted this podcast episode on my sit time on Monday so that I could have recorded it yesterday. Even though I was tired, I probably could have at least if I had it scripted, recorded it, right? But just being in the airport, like there's a lot of distractions, there's announcements that are happening, you're still in uniform, 
And even though you're not getting paid, like you're in uniform and you're sitting there and people have questions for you sometimes. So I just feel like there's like these interruptions that happen and sometimes you get wrapped up in a conversation with my crew members which happened with me because I was flying with some people that I haven't seen in a long time and so yeah it just kind of like the sit time actually kind of went fast luckily sometimes it goes really slow other times it goes really fast but um yeah I mean it just um sometimes to me is like not the easiest place to get work done so yeah basically. And oh, you can't nap either. I mean, you can if you're like within a hub and you're in like a closed area where like customers can't see you. But like if you're sitting somewhere that's not a hub, which is where I was, like you cannot be like sleeping out in like plain sight in your uniform. So yeah, I don't know. It For the most part, sit time is not ideal. And so just wanted to throw that one out there because it's big part of our life sometimes is uh, sitting around waiting for flights. Um, oh, sorry, I'm drinking iced tea and it was like, just came out. I'm not editing that because I don't have time to edit this thing, like literally at all. So sorry, people. All right. That's pretty much it. I'm rambling now. Let's take flight into episode 12. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. All right. Welcome to this week's episode, episode 12. We are diving into a very important topic that recently just happened, which is the United States DOD has activated the Civil Reserve Air Fleet, otherwise known as the acronym CRAF, C-R-A-F, for the third time in the last 70 years. And acronyms, by the way, are huge. I mean, huge when it comes to the United States government, the military, and also within the aviation industry. As an instructor, I can tell you there's an acronym for literally everything. It sometimes is overwhelming. Um, There's just so many acronyms. Like, they love it. The airline industry loves it. Obviously, there's a lot of military people that are within the aviation industry after they leave the military. So, like, it kind of just, like, all coincides together these three branches, I guess. But yeah, there's literally an acronym for everything. And sometimes it becomes a little confusing. And so while I'm on the topic of acronyms, I just want to inform you about a few others that you might be hearing me say throughout the episode. So DOD is the Department of Defense. It is an executive branch department of the United States federal government that is in charge of coordinating and supervising all agencies and functions of the government directly related to national security and the United States Armed Forces. DOT is the Department of Transportation. The DOT is a federal cabinet department of the U.S. government concerned with transportation. Commercial airlines fall under the DOT with the workforce here in the United States. FAA is the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA is the largest transportation agency of the U.S. government and regulates all the aspects of civilian aviation in the country, as well as over surrounding international waters. The FAA is responsible for putting FARs into place. A FAR, F-A-R, is a Federal Aviation Regulation. FARs are rules prescribed by the Federal Aviation Administration governing all aviation activities in the United States. So for example, there are certain things a flight attendant might ask you to do. And just an example is stowing your bag under the seat. It's not because we have nothing better to do. It's not because we are on a so-called quote unquote power trip. It is because we absolutely need to follow procedures and comply with the FAR set in place by the FAA. So getting back to the craft, which is And if I'm being completely honest, it's something I have never heard of until last week. Literally had no idea what this was, which is why I want to talk about it. I think it's so important. I mean, the fact that I am a flight attendant instructor for my company and I had no idea what this was, like, was like, okay, there's must be lots of people that don't know what this is. So, like, let's learn about it. Right. So 
I think this is something that many people, like I said, don't know about because it's only been activated two other times in addition to this time since 1952. Let's start with what is the craft, okay? So the Civil Reserve Air Fleet, also known as CRAF, C-R-A-F, program, is designed to provide the Department of Defense, or the DOD, with commercial aircraft to augment military aircraft during peacetime and wartime emergencies. CRAF is composed of civil air carriers that contract not only their aircraft, but also their operating and support personnel and facilities. The program is economically feasible because it provides DOD with emergency aircraft capability without buying the aircraft, paying personal costs, or flying and maintaining aircraft during peacetime. Selected U.S. airlines contractually are committed to the Civil Reserve Air Fleet to support the U.S. DOD airlift requirements in emergencies when they need, when the need for airlift exceeds the capability of military aircraft. These airlines contractually pledge aircraft to the various segments of the craft ready for activation when needed. To join the craft, carriers must maintain a minimum commitment of 40% of its craft-capable passenger and cargo fleet. The aircraft committed must be U.S. registered, and carriers must commit and maintain at least four complete crews for each aircraft. The craft was created as a more orderly way of serving emergency military needs after aircraft were commandeered. I think I'm saying that right, but basically it's when they are just like taken. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, sorry. But basically this, the craft was created so that it would be more orderly way of serving emergency military use after the Berlin airlift in 1952 happened following World War II. CRAF has been activated only three times. This is what I. This is why I feel like I didn't know about it. The first activation was a part of Operation Desert Shield pertaining to the Gulf War in 1991. The second time it was activated was for Operation Iraqi Freedom pertaining to the war in Iraq in 2003. And the third time it was active and is currently active is right now, August 2021, for Operation Allies Refuge, which pertains to the war in Afghanistan. Operation Allies Refuge is an ongoing United States military operation to airlift selected at-risk Afghan citizens, interpreters, U.S. Embassy employees, and military. This is the first time it has been used to primarily transport civilians. 18 civilian aircraft have been activated, three aircraft from the following airlines, Atlas Air, Delta Airlines, American Airlines, Omni Air. There's also been two aircraft from Hawaiian Airlines activated and four aircraft from United Airlines activated. So they have to provide four full crews for each of these aircrafts. Um, It's been stated that the aircraft won't fly directly into Kabul, but transport They will transport evacuees in and out of safe bases in Bahrain, Qatar, and Germany. Here are a few quotes that the airlines have shared after they have activated aircraft for the craft. United Airlines stated, We are especially thankful to our flight crews, technicians, and support teams who are deploying at a month's, at a moment's, excuse me, not a month's, at a moment's notice to staff these missions. We live in complicated times, but we've learned that an essential ingredient to our collective well-being is working together. We are united in caring for this group of passengers as they travel safely to the United States. American Airlines stated, we are proud of the AA team who are helping us do our part to help with the emergency evacuation of US citizens and refugees coming from Kabul, Afghanistan. Please visit the link in our bio to learn more. And Hawaiian Airlines stated, we are proud to join the U.S. DOD DOD and our fellow air carriers in the human, getting all tied up here, in the humanitarian effort to bring to the United States our citizens and the Afghans who supported them. In the last few days, we have seen harrowing images from Kabul of those trying to flee, and we are ready to do our part. 
Yes. So the reason why I wanted to discuss this was because I had never heard of it. Like I said, I think I've already said that like at least three times. Like just because it was just so for me, it was like a little shocking because this is how I found out. I found out about it because I was just signing on to my network for my company just to see like what flying trips were out there and, you know, oh, can I trip trade my trip yet? Or can I, you know, what can I do with this trip? You know, to just try to like move my schedule around type of thing. And we get some messages that are like in our little inbox there. And I got a message and it was a message from my company saying that they were accepting bids if you were interested in volunteering to be put on the craft list and, it, and you know, basically explained the craft, but then also explained like if there weren't enough volunteers, you know, like drafting would occur and like all this stuff. So like, I don't know, at, at first, like, I'm not gonna lie, at first I was really confused. And then I also was like a little nervous with how the message was written. And also because it was just so unknown to me and I, and it was just like never discussed. So I, of course, had never heard of it before because I've only been flying for six years with my company. And this program was first activated for the first time when I was only four years old. So, you know, 30 years ago <laughs> was the first time it was activated. Um, the second time that it was activated, I was in high school. So just feel really almost like naive to global affairs that were happening at that time. Um, if you guys listen, have been listening to my podcast, then you know the episode one that I put out, my aviation story, how I started solo traveling and everything. I was like very, um, I was very like in a bubble, in like an American bubble before I started traveling. So like I really didn't pay attention to things outside of the country, let alone like my own state, really, which most Americans don't. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, of course I didn't really know about this. And then, um, yeah, um, yeah, but I kind of lost track to where it was, but like, cause I was like thinking about like, man, like, yeah, there's a lot of people that really are in their own bubble. But, um, one of the things that I feel like where I was most shocked was because, I just feel like there's certain parts of our contractual agreements that are never really discussed with employees. Um, and sometimes employees are just not even aware of, of things that are in their actual work contract, you know? And this was definitely one of those instances for me where I was like, wait, what, what did and I like reread it? And then like, I looked it up and I was like, Whoa, like, okay. Like I might have to like fly into, like a war zone. This was before like it was stated that you wouldn't actually be flying into Kabul and all that, but it's still, let me put it to you this way. It's still a very serious mission. Okay. So this is obviously a very important mission. And this is something that quite frankly, I'm not sure if people within the airlines are really prepared properly for it because yeah, it is just like kind of, it's just happening so fast. Like it's like, okay, you need to ha you need to like, let us know if you want to volunteer. And it was like literally days, you know? And I feel like some of the first craft flights have already landed back in the United States. So like, that's how quickly this operation and this program was moving, you know? And so, um, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not, I obviously I'm not speaking on everyone's behalf. These, these are just like thoughts, you know? I'm not saying this is like, you know, permanent thinking or like whatever, like for anyone that like, I just like want people to, to like understand, like, I'm just like having all these thoughts and I'm just kind of like speaking these thoughts out. But, um, I just like, don't know if people are really properly prepared for it. Cause like, obviously like we didn't have any type of training on this. And, um, I, I think like, you know, there's like a lack of language interpreters. Um, and I think that, I don't know, like, I think people are going to be like mentally and emotionally like challenged, you know what I mean? And so um, I'm just not sure if like, I think people like, man, I'm really having a hard time getting this out. Basically, if I were going, I would say in my head, I'd be like, I could handle this. I'm a caring individual. I understand that this might be really hard. But then I think if I was in that moment, I might get like 
emotionally tripped up, if that makes sense, you know? And so like, I'm not sure if everyone that is like volunteering to do this really truly knows like what they're getting themselves into. You know what I mean? And so, um, I mean, if you just basically, if you haven't been following what's going on over in Kabul, basically the Taliban militant took over Afghanistan's capital and for almost two decades, like they were driven out by U.S. troops. And so now, just like a few weeks before U.S. troops were supposed to be fully pulled out of there, they have now taken over the government and they've seized power of Afghanistan. And it's just I mean, it's really scary. There's slayings going on. There's killings going on. And um, there's so many people that are trying to escape to the point where people were clinging onto aircraft like a U.S. Air Force aircraft that was leaving People were clinging onto the side of it and falling to their death. So, yeah, to say it lightly, the amount of PTSD and heartache that many of these refugees and citizens might be feeling or living through might be extremely, extremely difficult to cope with, especially as a working crew member. Um, It's just going to be a very emotional experience for those that get accepted to work these flights and Of course, it's going to be one of the most rewarding as well, for obvious reasons. Um, But with that being said, besides the points I touched upon, there are like a lot of things that I really can't willingly discuss just because of security purposes. So everything I've discussed here on this podcast is readily available to the public. It can be found on news outlets, resources, government pages, and social media outlets. So, you know you can do the research yourself, but I just kind of wanted to like tell listeners out there that maybe aren't within the industry like about it because like I really thought it was just so fascinating that this was actually a thing because I really didn't know it was and I'm actually in the industry, you know what I mean? So for anyone that is listening that is within the aviation industry and has volunteered and is going to operate one of these flights, it's obviously an honor to help our military and assist them in helping getting these people to safety. So thank you for your selflessness contribution with this program. Signing up in itself, even if you don't get to operate the trip, is absolutely admirable and it's just so caring. So you really should just be so proud of yourselves. Um, I know that for my particular company, there was an overwhelming response of volunteers, which is just really, in my opinion, heartwarming, knowing how many people I work with that are truly ready to sacrifice their life and help others in need. It's just really, really heartwarming. Um, If you think about it, like with flight attendants, I don't think a lot of people think about this, but for me, every time I go to work, sometimes people are like, oh, aren't you scared? Like, you know, something's going to happen or like this or that, like you work on airplanes and it's like, Not really, but like if you really do think about it, I mean, flight attendants, we're the last ones off the plane. Like we're there to help you evacuate if something happens. And so it really is a risk every day. And uh, I just don't think people think about that when they board a plane. Um, But yeah, with that being said, I just want to close out the episode portion to all the listeners out there and say that flight attendants are so much more than a waitress in the sky. Flight attendants are aviation's first responders and heroes. So thank you to all the flight crew out there. It has not been easy lately with the mask mandates and unruly passengers. So thank you for sticking it out during these weird times. If you are a passenger listening, thank you for being one of those passengers that is on our side and for complying with FAA rules and things like that. It just makes our job a lot easier. And, and, you know, instead of arguing with us, definitely makes um, our days go by better. Um, And once again, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that has volunteered to be a part of the craft program this time around. Yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. You should be so proud of yourself. I'm gonna take a quick break and I'll be back with Aviation News. All 
right. I really hope you enjoyed the episode portion. Thought that was super interesting to talk about the craft program here in the United States. Let's dive into some other aviation news. Obviously, that whole that whole episode was basically really big aviation news, but let's talk about what other aviation news is being prominent on the headlines. First up, Delta Airlines plans to charge employees who haven't been vaccinated again for COVID-19. The extra $200 a month will be charged beginning in November as part of the company's health care plans. They will also require unvaccinated employees to be tested weekly for the coronavirus starting in September. So this is an interesting approach. Different airlines are obviously taking different approaches. I know, I think I talked about it in last, the last episode, episode 11, which was all about airlines mandating vaccines now. And I had said that Delta hadn't really come up with like a decision yet. I don't think Delta had come up with a decision yet, but basically United Airlines was one of the first airlines to put into place a mandate. Basically, you need to get vaccinated or you won't have a job. So now Delta has now decided that they're not going to fire you, but instead they're going to take this interesting approach to charge a health care surcharge out of your health insurance, basically. So for anyone that doesn't want to get vaccinated, that can't provide like religious belief or medical reasoning, they're going to now have to pay $200. So it's either get vaccinated for free or pay $200 a month for not getting vaccinated. So still kind of like one of those ultimatum situations, still not really a great situation, I guess, like for people that don't want to get vaccinated just as much as people working for other companies that are mandating it. You know, I understand it's a very touchy subject. Uh, No one really reached out to me about that episode. And I actually haven't even had the time to look at the stats to see how many people listen to it. But I know I was a little nervous talking about it because, you know, there are a lot of people I know that do not want to get vaccinated. And so, like, I just definitely don't want to be, like, pressing anybody. Um, I know that I feel that if more people get vaccinated, it will help our situation. But, you know, everyone's different. So, um, you know, if we could just work together and, like, actually listen to each other's opinions like I have definitely listened to many people's opinions about you know who they don't want to get vaccinated for certain reasons and so you know we can only come from a place of compassion and understanding if we can you know what I mean but anyway just an interesting approach and that was like literally everywhere I looked I was on every single major like Twitter post and blog so that's why that's number one for aviation news this week Up next, keeping up with Delta, they have placed an order for 30 Airbus 321 NEOs. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if it's going to be called A321 NEO or if it's called A321 NEO. Who knows? But yeah, they're bringing that grand total of ordered Airbuses, the A321 NEOs, to 155. So they've ordered 155 of those aircraft. So I always think it's a good sign if, airlines are ordering aircraft that means they expect that travel is here to stay which is good Um, I also think that kind of goes along with all this vaccination stuff I think that they're just doing whatever they can to not go back into a situation where there's a government bailout type of thing all right Up next, we have the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine has officially been approved by the FDA That is huge news because that is part of the reason why a lot of people didn't want to get vaccinated. That was probably one of the main reasons why people don't want to get vaccinated is because many of these vaccines were not certified or clinically approved. So, yeah, I think that's a huge step forward that this one has been approved. Hopefully it'll get more people vaccinated and we could be like having a great life moving forward if, if, you know, we could keep countries and borders open and flights open. All right. Next up for Aviation News, we have, you can now get everyday items delivered for free to select Hyatt Place Hotels. Hyatt is partnering with 
the delivery platform GoPuff to provide guests a convenient option to purchase everyday items while on property. This will be convenient for families traveling with children or pets, and the pilot locations are in Chicago, Phoenix, Denver, and Nashville. This iced tea is making me... Sorry, you guys. I'm not editing out. I don't have the time. It needs to go up. Anyway, Virgin Atlantic announced that their clubhouse is back in London Heathrow with Peloton bikes, scan for champagne service, and table service as well. It looks pretty dope. I saw it on their Twitter feed. Czech Republic bans unvaccinated American tourists. That's the next one I have. So, I mean... I, I feel like there's just like all this like segregation that's starting to happen, like, you know, um, which I know for I follow some of my friends that are unvaccinated that are traveling and I could I could tell like their frustrations like, wow, I need I, I need this card in order to get in here and I don't have it and I'm not vaccinated and I, I you know, I, I, I can't go into basic like pharmacies or like stores or you know whatever and yeah there's like a lot of um there's just like so many feelings when it comes to to this um uh whole topic you know what i mean all right up next i have the pointsguy.com which is like one of the major massive travel blogs out there they are currently hiring so if you love travel and you love maximizing your points and your miles they are hiring also, while we are on the hiring subject, we're going to close it out with flight attendant applications have opened at some mainline airlines, including United Airlines and American Airlines. So if you have had your heart set on working for a legacy car- carrier, now is your chance, you guys. Get in while you can. Seniority is everything. Get that application in. Do your video interview or whatever. <laughs> Do your face-to-face research the job don't fuck it up i should probably do a whole episode on skills for interviews and stuff like that obviously don't say don't fuck it up or anything like that but you know what i mean um definitely get your apps in if you are wanting to fly a legacy mainline carrier um those two airlines are currently hiring That's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you learned something new. Once again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to What the Flight Radio. I really appreciate it. Please follow along and, um, you know, tell your friends, anyone that you know that loves travel and aviation. I really want to start getting more guests on here. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it's the fact of actually reaching out to the people to schedule interviews and I'm going away next week. So going to keep it biweekly for now. Definitely need to update that on my social platform. So I will see you in two weeks for episode 13. Thank you guys for understanding and for all your support. I love you guys and be safe out there. I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Aww.